So we got a letter from a Christian in our P.O. box this week, like a handwritten one with a pencil, which I'll admit isn't a terribly common occurrence. Uh, don't get me wrong, we get all kinds of cool stuff from listeners. Folks send us books they wrote, gifts, the stuff they made while they listened to our show, but Christians, they usually stick to email. Anyway, my letter writer told us that he had listened to the show, no, he had not, and that he considered us to be honest and open to debate. See, told you he hadn't listened to the show. And if we could answer one simple question, we could prove to him that evolution was real. Now, I hate to disappoint you, but no, we couldn't. His so-called question was just the usual Christian misunderstanding of evolution wrapped in a barely discernible question mark. But it did make me think of a Facebook post that gets shared from time to time in atheist and science groups. You've probably seen it. It's uh, from a group called Christians Against Science, which is kind of worthy of a diatribe all on its own. And the post reads, quote, the earth is 4,000 years old. Change my mind. And the first comment on that post replies, the half-life of uranium-238 is 4.5 billion years. It decays into radium-226, which in turn decays into radon-222. Radon-222 becomes polonium-210, which finally decays into a stable nuclide lead. The existence of lead as an element disproves the 4,000-year-old myth. And look, for the sake of the pedants and the chemists in our audience, I'll point out that that's actually not exactly true scientifically. Like, not all lead comes from uranium-238. I mean, I mean, it does, but it, it's not in that order. The specifics are boring. But the point, generally speaking, stands, right? Anyone can buy themselves a bit of polonium-210 and... 280 days later, give or take a couple days, thank you, pedants, they end up with lead, right? They can monitor it. They can test it. Hell, they can watch it happen under an atomic microscope. It's boring, but the point is they could. And this is true all the way up the chain of radiological decay, right? There are no missing links, no need for meta-analysis or an advanced understanding of mathematics. It is actually observably there. And look, I bring this up, not because I think if I pointed this out to the author of that letter, he would, you know, throw his hands in the air and start fucking his fishing buddies like he's always dreamed of. But as atheists, we're often told by theists that the path to non-belief is down the road of just a few cleverly answered apologetics. But that isn't true. Right? The existence of lead is just another piece of evidence that wherever that mystical intellectual place they keep telling us we can get them to is, we're here. We're surrounded by it, right? And I, I'm not an idiot, right? If filling in the God of the gaps worked, we'd have done away with religion right about when nobody sailed off the edge of the earth. But it is worth remembering that evidence for the non-existence of God isn't just in clever places theists demand we put it. It's everywhere. Morally, philosophically, logically, wherever you turn with enough inquiry, you will find evidence of the failure of the God hypothesis. And too often we, as atheists, waste our time pretending otherwise because theists tell us to. Look, I stopped believing in God because Carl Sagan reminded me that this planet had thousands of confident religions, right? That was it. That was the crack in the dam. And honestly, the rest was just paperwork, right? And I'm lucky in a thousand ways that I got to deconvert the way I did, right? I didn't risk my family or community to do it. I actually found a community that not only welcomed me, but gave me a platform. And now that platform has grown to the point that Christians who haven't listened to my podcast send me letters telling me that I could change their mind with one simple trick. And look, I'm not going to write that Christian back. I know the only reason that he wrote me a handwritten letter was so that I would take the time to write him back. But if I did, it only seems fair to tell him that the answers he seeks are right there at the tip of his pencil. <laughs> 